What's going on guys, the original Mako back with some more Risk of Rain 2 content and today we're doing the same type of video we did yesterday. Uh, if you didn't see the one yesterday, go watch it, or at least go watch the intro, because I'm not going to repeat everything about it. Uh, but we're obviously going to be doing a different character this time and still trying to make it to the boss and hopefully win the game. Uh, let's just go right into it because the first thing I want to mention is uh, yesterday I did Acrid, which is the character where you have to stabilize cells in the void to unlock. The portal, the purple portal you have to get, or you have to take to unlock him, is right. Uh, you f oh, well, guess we're gone. Uh, it is gonna be kind of hard on this character to control. So you fall down, you kind of stay along the side, and there's also a logbook entry here. I actually didn't even know that, and I think I might have jumped past it. But if you stay along the right side, uh, there's actually a portal, a purple portal that you can go into. Um, I will try to not fail miserably this time. Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. So you'll see a little opening somewhere. And you can take that. If you follow this all the way back, you will go into the void. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't need to, but that is how you get start stabilizing all of the um, different things to unlock Acrid. Oh, ouch. Alright, so let's just get on out of here and go on to stage two. Uh, we don't have a ton of items right now, but... The ones we got in the first stage weren't too bad. Can't complain. Uh, this character is much better at dealing with uh, high high in the air enemies, which is good because that was a weak suit, weak point of Acrid. So his left click, his basic attack is fireballs. And you can see right above the fireball sim- I missed every one of those. You can see in the fireball symbol, or right above it, there is a counter that goes up to four and then will stop at four. So you can hold four charges and they will recharge every so often, giving you another one. The fireballs obviously have a chance to cause burn damage. Oh, okay, this guy is just hurtling everything. Jesse Owensing. Uh, the right click, you've seen it a couple times, it's this blue ball that does like an AoE explosion type of damage. Uh, it has a pretty quick recharge. He doesn't have a movement ability, so getting speed, higher, faster speed is always good. And defense on this character since he doesn't have a real dodge out of taking damage. Um, but his shift is kind of cool, it's a ice wall. Anything that walks into it will freeze. And they are, if they're at low enough health, it'll just straight up execute them. Just bye bye. Gone forever. And then the R, you can see I'm currently using it, is a flamethrower. Which does a lot of damage. Like, it does real good damage. I honestly really want to scrap that. Uh, rusted key, so I might just go do that. While also keeping an eye out for the next... Oh, I think I see the particles for the next teleporter. So let's go ahead and scrap this key. Maybe look for... Oh, how much is the big chest? 91? Yeah, yeah, let's definitely get the big chest. A red whip. Okay, like I said, movement speed is not bad. I think I'm going to hit this scrapper and then just go right for the boss. I'd like to scrap the rusted key. Thank you. I haven't found that that is a very good item to have in general. So, let's just get rid of it while we can. Still have yet to beat the final boss in this game, and it's starting to frustrate me, so. Hopefully we can change that, potentially here. 
I don't know why the teleporter is always back here for some reason. But it almost always is back here. I don't know, this isn't, I guess this actually isn't really that bad of a spot to fight a boss. It's just weird that it's been so consistently back here. Another one of these? Okay, so this is still a very frustrating boss. Even though it's definitely easier to deal with than on the last character. Whoa, everything just kind of went out of sight for a second. Uh, the one thing with this character is a pretty low health pool. Was I not behind the... Was I not behind the rock? I don't think I was behind the rock. Whoa. Um... Well, you know, that's the, uh, that's the deal with this stuff. Uh, I will show the good with the bad. This was the bad. <laughs> I don't... I really don't know what killed me. I don't think... His AoE attack shouldn't have killed me. I was behind... Okay, either way. Uh, the Artificer's skills. Holding the jump key causes the Artificer to hover in the air. Fire a bolt of damage. 220% that ignites enemies. Uh, a stunning bomb, charging exploding, that deals 400 to 200%. So you can fully charge your right clicks. You can hold that down to charge up the damage. Uh, the snap freeze, the barrier that hurts enemies for 100% damage and will instantly kill if they are below 30% health. And the flamethrower burns all enemies in front of you for 1700 damage, which really is not too shabby at all. Um, the way to unlock the artificer in Risk of Rain 2. Uh, let me double check just to make sure I have this right. Um, you have to complete the challenge pause, which I want to say is the suspended in time. Yeah, so you have to free the survivor suspended in time. So you have to basically get 11 lunar coins or 10 and get lucky. And then go to the bazaar, uh, the blue portal that I was sh showed you at the beginning of the video. And spend them on the guy who's next to like the big boss looking guy that you can't kill that has a health bar. And spend your coins to unlock him. And you will get this little bugger. Uh, so once again, another very, very easy character to unlock. And he's up there with the Acrid and Huntress as my top three characters right now. Um, obviously we went, had a lot of more luck on the acrid, but to be fair, we did get a pretty unfortunate boss. The wandering, the, the jellyfish is just an annoying boss in general. Probably one of my least favorite to deal with anyway, but yeah, it was an unfortunate circumstance and I'm still not really sure how I died, but I'm a true man and I will show not only the good runs, but the bad runs as well. Uh, because, you know, sometimes I feel like getting roasted. So go ahead and roast me in the comments. But if you do enjoy the roguelike content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm bringing roguelike content nearly daily to the channel. So make sure to stick around for that. Uh, Wednesday, roguelike Wednesday is coming up. The full review of Darkest Dungeon, which I know the first video didn't do too well. But I would really, really recommend watching it. That game is so interesting in how it's played and a very, very good roguelike from what I've seen so far. And then if you want to watch these runs live, whether it's Gunfire Reborn, Risk of Rain, Darkest Dungeons, Fall Guys, any other roguelikes, any other games that I might be playing, check me out at Twitch, twitch.tv slash The Original Mako. I stream pretty much every night from like 8 Eastern to anywhere from 11 to 1 in the morning, any anywhere around that time. So if you want to catch all that, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Thank you guys for watching. I love your faces and I will catch you guys in the next one.